Hey guys, I'm Kat. And I'm Sunny. And this is I, Two Cents. So with 2019 being over, we thought it'd be a good time to go over our top nine anime of 2019 and look forward into 2020 to see what we're anticipating the most. So we've compiled a list. Each of us have a top nine. Some of them may overlap, so we'll discuss those as they go. And some of them might be different and we'll tell each other why. And if you guys have a list too, Comment them down below and see if maybe we have the same idea. Or even if they're different, we'd love to hear your opinions on what were your top anime of the year. Stick around to the end for an announcement for our next reaction series on this channel. Patrons already know what it is, but if you don't, stay tuned. Disclaimer. I didn't get to watch as many anime as I wanted to in 2019. Also, another disclaimer, our lists are not in any particular order. They're just kind of off the top of our heads, not even by season, it's just how we thought them up. So don't take them as a ranking system or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get out the continuing series that we both know are on each other's list. Bungo Stray Dogs, season three. If you couldn't tell. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, we're big Bungo fans. You should see my wall. <laughs> but that's for another time. So the first two seasons were really great and this season just kind of kept it up. The quality stayed the same, the music was awesome. I liked seeing where the story went while also getting more of like the past. That's one of the parts that I really liked too. And like we had a lot of character development this season. Like I like that you get to know more of the villains who were once our enemies now we're rooting for them this time. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> that was cheesy AF but it was great. As like a fan it was just... There's nothing that ever like takes you out of it and you're yeah. like, what the heck? It's not like it's a perfect series, but its imperfections are charming. That's why it's one of my top nine series on this list. So one of the highlights of 2019 for me was this remake of Fruits Basket, because we both really liked the first series. Yeah. And this one just did not disappoint at all. Yes, the animation, the pacing, the character design, the music, the acting. The acting. Oh. Yes. yes, it was a good series. Definitely one on my top nine too. I think it's a good remake I do of think the so. original manga too. Since I read the manga, I'm happy to see it getting like the adaptation it deserves. The first one, it fit well for its time, but like, you can tell it's old and it has yeah. like, it's cheesier, it's more comedic, this is more serious, more there's, dramatic. More, there's more drama, it's more emotional. So for people who read the original manga or who watched the original anime, I think this is a good remake, a revamp. I think also since people who watched it before were younger, for me at least, I was younger so I understood it more to be funny. But now watching it older, I'm seeing the more serious parts of it. Yeah. So I can appreciate that more too. I think it did really well. Another remake that really impressed me was Dororo in winter of 2019. And that one, I didn't see the original. Yeah, <laughs> way too long ago. Way long ago. But I really liked the series. Yeah. I feel like maybe it's because we hadn't seen anything from the original, so we were really open for it. But the way they did this story and the way the characters grew on you, it was just a good story to put together. Like, it was really episodic, but the underlying theme and everything, it got to you. And just really like rooting for these two main characters to stay together and just live happily. If he wants his body back, but if he gets his body back, spoilers happen, you know? So. But he's very much like in it for himself, but he's helping the people around him. Sometimes. Uh, don't know, at least. <laughs> Sometimes. But that's part of it. That's though. part of yeah. it, yeah. It, it really is. It tugs at your heartstrings. This moral dilemma that happens so often. Who is really the good guy in this series? Who's in the right? So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Definitely recommend it. So another anime series that's on our top nine that tugged our heartstrings was The Promised Neverland. Gosh. Whoa. That first episode. It'll get you and then you just kind of have to sit and enjoy the ride. That's, just, that's like all I need to say. If you haven't watched it yet, we're not gonna spoil it, but damn. You'll follow these characters and root for them, but it's not like you can go and protect them yourself. As much as you want to. <laughs> we're really excited for season two that's gonna be airing in 2020 at some point. October? October, yes. Yes. So we'll be Definitely. checking that out. Mm -hmm. The live action. Oh, The live yeah, action is good. coming, yeah. So hopefully that'll be good. So while we were getting our hearts ripped apart in the winter season with Promise Neverland and Dororo, we also had a small 
sigh of relief when watching my roommate is a cat. A glimmer of hope. Sometimes. Sometimes. But even now I found myself getting emotional. Yes, that's true. And it's probably just because I really like animals. And I was so emotional about it. Most people probably wouldn't be. Maybe. But the parts that were sweet and happy, they were just so heartwarming. Even if you're not necessarily an animal person or even a cat person, I feel like the way they do the story to be from a human perspective and then an animal, like the cat's perspective, it helps you be able to relate to the cat. So mm -hmm. even if you don't like animals, you can still relate to the character. It's just interesting storytelling. But even if it was heart-wrenching, it was still very light and enjoyable yeah. at the same time. So it had a good mix of emotions throughout mm -hmm. the series. It was definitely one that impressed me more than I thought it would. Like I was thinking it'd be like all comedy and then all of a sudden you get feels and yeah. then more comedy and then feels and it's just definitely one you, that I recommend. We recommend. Mm. That's why it's in our top nine. So another series that really helped us heal after getting our hearts torn out is <laughs> Carolyn Tuesday. It's a show about these two girls trying to be artists and they go on like a game show. I went in not knowing what to expect. And then I come out like, wow, this is really great. I really care for these characters. See, for me, it was kind of the opposite. Like I went in knowing it was going to be about these two girls and that it would probably get emotional. But I didn't really know about the game show and like oh. the, the lighter moments oh. about it. I do like the little moments that they have together and mm -hmm. just getting to know them. It feels really authentic. They really took their time to animate little details. Characters in the background or Carolyn Tuesday interacting during a montage. Those things really help bring these characters to life. We haven't finished it yet. Part two just came on to Netflix in America. So, so we'll get there. <laughs> We're getting there. We're working our way through. Expect a final thoughts review of it eventually once we finish the series. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it in more detail. Since we haven't finished it, for me, I didn't include Carolyn Tuesday in my personal top nine, but I do really think it was a great series. Another series that surprised me this year was Kono Oto Tomare. Like, I just kind of went in, just like, okay, I'll check this show out, see how it is. And then I got so invested in it. And you've watched more of it than I have. Mm -hmm. I'm still on season one of it, but it really draws you in. And I think the music is what really plays a huge part in drawing you in. The performances are just really good. Yeah. Those are like the highlights of the series. But the characters are so fun. They're also likable. Mm -hmm. You know what I thought one wouldn't be likable? She doesn't like you. I don't like her. I still don't like her. I'm like, oh, okay, you're, you're fine. <laughs> no. No, she betrayed me. I can never accept her. Nope. Mm -mm. So this one's not in your tab night. I haven't finished it and some of the characters I'm not 100% on, so that's why it's not in my top nine. But it's still a show that I will continue watching until I finish season two. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend it. If you like that kind of thing. Yeah, because it's been a while since I've got into like a high school setting anime. I haven't watched that since like pff, years ago. But this one, though I don't necessarily like those anymore, it's still enjoyable enough because it kind of takes it out of high school. It's good, I liked it. Another personal favorite of mine that Sadi has not watched but I loved was Given. It starts off kind of slow, but you really get to know the characters and the development is understandable and believable. Just start to love them and then and don't want them to hurt. And then, and then they're hurting. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And you just need to take care of them. Oh, are you getting emotional right now? I think I see tears. I don't. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The big climax that if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about was just that still gets to me. Oh. And now I can't wait for the movie. Oh, cool. I didn't know. Oh, I think. That's 2020. So I have time to watch it because it is on my list. I'm gonna get it cut up. Yeah. But I don't think she'll like it as much as I do. You're making the character seem relatable, like somebody I, I could root for. So I feel like I could like the characters, like the story, it's music. I mean, I like the art style. That always helps. So yeah, I'll, it's definitely on my list to check out. All right, guys, I'm gonna kind of cheat on this list a little bit. Throw an anime that I actually haven't seen yet, but I've seen panels from the manga and people's thoughts on the manga and the anime. And so I'm gonna throw B Stars onto my top nine, even though I haven't watched it yet. But I feel like 
<laughs> this is, it's deserving to be on my top nine, even if I haven't watched it yet. It's by the same studio that did Land of the Lustrous. The opening and the endings that we reacted to a while ago were really great. The story seems to be very involved and very captivating. So I think it deserves a spot on this list. I'm pretty sure you're right. The story does seem really good. Very compelling, very like world questioning. <laughs> Thought invoking with how the characters are portrayed. I'll end up being like, wow. That one also has a season two coming. Right, yeah, it was, just it was just announced. And hopefully it will be cut up by then. So again, that one I didn't personally put on my list because mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. Right, but she's the cheater here. She's so. not confident enough. Oh. <laughs> so now we're both gonna cheat a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. And the next one on our list is Vinland Saga, which we did start. We had at least started this one. Mm -hmm. We just haven't finished it yet. But we both <laughs> enjoyed it from what we watched. It also felt worthy of being on this top nine list. Even just the little clips I've seen or the openings and endings that we right. saw. Looks like you really get to know this Thorfinn kid. Mm -hmm. It's really rude for him and his mission. The animation is also really good too. The production was really good. The production was really good. It's with studios. We'll get to it eventually, but for now, just know it is on our, our top nine. So last but not least, and still in no particular order, is Demon Slayer. This was like probably one of the biggest shows for a lot of people in 2019. Yeah, I've had a lot of hype. Just got top animation. Yeah, that's animation. right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely getting a bunch of awards. A lot of recognition. A lot of recognition. I mean, it deserves it. Mm. Like, dang, that animation was great. And the story and the characters and music. So of course we could go on and on, but we've actually already done that. So if you're interested, check out our Demon Slayer final thoughts by clicking the I or the link in the description. The way it ended got me like really ready for more. Mm -hmm. With the movie coming out next year, yes. and then season two sometime after. Looks like it'll be a fun long ride. Fun. So that concludes our top nine-ish anime of 2019 in no particular order. But we each have one honorable mention that didn't quite make the list, but we still wanted to recognize. For me, that'll be Psychopath season three. Although I haven't actually started it yet, I am a huge fan of Psychopaths, and I'm really excited with how the series looked and the voice actors in the series for this season. It looks like it's gonna be good. We just haven't gotten to it yet. <gasps> we'll get there. For me, I wanted to recognize Ahiru no Soda, which we did have a highlights video of it before, but it was just another one that surprised me and how much I liked it. The reason why it's not in the list is because there's still so many episodes left that I wasn't sure. I'd seen enough to put it in the top nine, but it's one that I definitely enjoyed this year. Mm -hmm. It definitely has the characters to pull you in, mm -hmm. so I agree, it should be recognized too. But out with the old, in with the new, what are you anticipating in 2020? Well, I only have a couple shows that I'm like, okay, I'm for sure gonna watch this, and it might not even be stuff that's popular, I just know that I'll probably enjoy them. Real quick, just wanted to say the shows that I'm going to mention are really niche, and this will probably be the only chance I'll get to talk about them, because we'll probably never do any reactions or reviews on them, but I want to let you guys know that I am watching them. For me, that's gonna be Inspector, because I have the manga, mm -hmm. and Mamoru Miyano is the main voice actor for it, so oh my god, I'm ready! And it looks like it's gonna be a cute story that it I can look. just enjoy. Yeah. One for me that I think will just end up being me watching it, because it's, <laughs> it's really just a personal nostalgia kind of show. Oh, but it's Sorcerer Stabber Orphan, which is another remake. Oh, an older okay. show. And I really like the first first two seasons I guess it was. So I want to see this one and see what they've done with the animation and see if it gets that treatment that Fruits Basket got. But even if not, I just like the characters and the story. It doesn't look like a complete retelling, but it looks like you don't have to have watched the first one. Oh, okay, okay. Watch it. So I don't know if it's more true to the original story, but I just want to watch it. So a series that I will be enjoying, probably offline, but who knows, is my next life as a villainess, all routes lead to doom. And I know that sounds super cringy because it is. But I'm interested in this series because I think it's one of the first series that brings to life this genre of a otome isekai. But this, it's like it's a female main character and she's going into an otome game. 
So it's kind of interesting. It's like an isekai, but for girls. I figured it'd be a good way to have a good comparison for anything that comes in the future. I read the manga for it. It's all right, but I'm still gonna watch it. And now for the announcement that we mentioned in the beginning, something else to look forward to in 2020 is Haikyuu! Yay! We're gonna be starting our Haikyuu reactions. Actually, we've already started them on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. so click on the I, the link in the description. But we will be putting highlight reactions to them on here for you guys. Our goal is to catch up to it by the time the second core of season four comes out so that we can end up watching that with you guys. Unfortunately, we won't be able to catch up to the first core, mm -hmm. but definitely our goal is core two. Mm -hmm. So let us know what your top nine or top however many for 2019 and what you're anticipating for 2020 is, comments down below. As always, we just want to give a shout out to our patrons on Patreon and a special thanks to Dark Demon 913 Chris Poveroni, Carly Mero, Isaac Bedoya, and Phoenix Yang. It's thanks to you guys and all our patrons on our Patreon, they were able to make videos like this one. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys, you're awesome. Thank you guys. Hope to see you more in 2020. If you like our content, subscribe to our channel and leave a like on the video. And if you want to see more, you can check out our past videos. Don't forget to follow us on our socials, linked in the description. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.